Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. Okay, so in this problem, it's telling you begin by graphing f of x equals log base 3 of x, then use transformations of this graph to graph the given function. What's the vertical asymptote? Use the graphs to determine the given function's domain and range. So in the first part, which you said you're not having any trouble with, but in the first part, when we see that it's being multiplied by one half outside of the log, that means it's affecting the anything that happens outside of the logarithm, not on the inside by the x, is going to affect the y, which means it's a vertical change. And when you multiply by a fraction, what kind of vertical change is that? Stretching? Close. If you multiplied by two, instead of a half, you would be doubling every y value, which would stretch the function out vertically. But since yeah. you're taking half, it's shrinking everything. Yeah. Half of something is smaller. So you're actually shrinking vertically. Okay, and then it asks you to graph the function g of x equals 1 half log base 3 of x. The reason why in the beginning it says begin by graphing f of x equals log base 3 of x is they want you to use transformations to get the graph. On your paper at home, you're going to graph um, f of x equals log base 3 of x. To do that, you need to be familiar with the basic parent graph uh, of a log function. There are actually two basic graphs for log functions depending on if the base b is greater than 1 or if b is a fraction between 0 and 1. If the number b is greater than 1, then all log functions go through the point 1, 0. y equals log base b of x, no matter what b is, is going to go through the point 1, 0. And there's a reason for that. It's because log base b of 1 is saying, what power do you raise b to to get 1? And any number raised to the 0 power is 1. So it goes through the point 1, 0. And then also we know that log base b of b, what power do you raise b to to get b? How about b to the first? Wouldn't that be equal to b? Yeah. Okay, so anytime you take log base b of b, you get a 1, because it's b to the first power that's equal to b. So that means that every log function is going to go through the point b1. Now, if b is a number bigger than 1, that means that it's somewhere over here. It's bigger than 1. And we're going through the point b1. So I don't know exactly where b is, but I know it's a number bigger than 1. And you're going to have a graph that goes this direction. Now you cannot plug 0 into a log, and you also cannot plug negatives into a log. So there's always an asymptote at x equals 0 here that it will not cross. So this is the basic graph of a log when b is greater than 1. When b is between 0 and 1, it still has an asymptote at x equals 0. It still goes through the point 1, 0. But when you go to plot the point b1, b is between 0 and 1. What that means is if you plot b1, it's going to be maybe here. And the shape of the graph is flipped over. It looks like this. Okay, so in our problem, we're trying to use the graph of f of x equals log base 3 of x to get the graph of g of x equals 1 half log base 3 of x. So b is 3, which is greater than 1. So you know it's going to look like the function on the left. So you know how I always talk about the key points on the graph? The key points on this graph are going to be 1, 0, and instead of b1, this time it'll be what? Uh, b3, 1? 3, 1, exactly. So it'll have these two key points, and it'll have the asymptote x equals 0. So when we graph it, it's going to look exactly the same as up there, but just with those things labeled. So the graph of so the graph of this function is going to go through 1 0 3 1 it's going to have the same shape as the graph in the top left and it's going to have an asymptote at x equals 0 so now we want to take this is like just for reference graph f we want to think about what g would look like based on f well, we've already decided that the function g of x is going to be vertically compressed, shrunk. 
shrinking it vertically, right? Well, that's because when you look at the function g of x equals 1 half log of 3x, the 1 half being on the outside of the logarithm is affecting each y coordinate. What is it doing to each y coordinate is being multiplied by the original y coordinate. So let's think about where each of our points and asymptotes, how they would be affected. So if you multiply multiply the y coordinate by a half, well, 1 comma 0 times a half is still 0. So that point actually isn't going to move. But the point 3, 1 will be affected. What's 1 half of 1? Half of 1 means 1 half times 1, which is just 1 half, right? Okay, so and then x equals 0 is not affected because only changing y values and that's an x value so that asymptote is going to stay exactly the same so our function g is going to go through one zero it's going to go through three one half which is a little bit compressed closer to the x-axis it's still going to have the same x equals zero asymptote and it's going to be the same type of shape it's just squished a little closer to the x-axis so let's go ahead and graph this in my labs so we're going to plot the point um well First, let's put in the asymptote. Got to put in my line, which is dotted. Then I'm going to go to, note solid line on the log function. I'm going to put in one zero. There we go. Put in a half for vertical shrink and a base of three. Okay, and check answer, and I got it. Okay, what is the vertical asymptote? The vertical asymptote is x equals zero. Still mean is parentheses zero. Parentheses zero. To infinity. Good. Okay, and what would the range be? Um, negative infinity to positive infin infinity. Good. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.